got this giant rock right here that's gonna come out in order to get it into there. So we'll see what we can do with that. Oh, I think you can see a drill hole right there. Looks like somebody was drilling and blasting here. Well, now I really gotta get in here. Now, this is one of those lost mines I told you about that we found on the USGS maps. And if you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna leave a link right here. Now that's to some of our lost gold mines. Click on it, watch it, and I guarantee you're gonna understand why we're spending so much time digging this big old hole right here. So while you've been sleeping, I've been digging. That's right, I've been out here digging all night. <laughs> so what are we gonna do? Well, like I said, we're, we got some big old rocks down in here. Uh, I got this, they're all made out of limestone. And of course that's a sedimentary rock. And we've got the Sierra Blaster already set up. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and fracture this one. And this one, I'm gonna show you how to do it. And I'm gonna teach you the different types of rocks out there so you can use this tool, the Sierra Blaster, a whole lot better. Cause I guarantee this is a perfect tool if you're gonna be out there looking for plaster or load mining because you can fracture rocks of any size. You just have to know how to use the tool. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? So come on, let's go! <laughs> Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Okay, now, I wanted you to get a good look at this. See this? Here's our first shot. See where the charge went off right in here? And it fractured this limestone out. Our second charge, the reason why it didn't go off, and you're gonna see this time to time, is these little spring-loaded clips, sometimes they'll, they'll cut when they'll pinch the wires and they'll literally cut the wire and you'll get a bad connection. So all you gotta do is check to make sure that it hasn't snipped off that copper lead. Uh, that's the biggest thing I've seen on these Sierra Blasters, but if the, uh, if the wire's sticking out the other end and it's on there tight, then you know that you got a good circuit. Now here you can see where I fractured the limestone really, really well, see that? And another secret to these little guys is, is compression. You've got to keep the head inside as much as you can because the whole thing works off of compression. So you want to stack rocks on top of the heads whenever you can. Now we're going to be working on an angle on this one. I'm going to show you how to stack rock on that or something to keep the head in. And then of course we'll get into using multiple boosters and I'll explain all that. But a, limestone is a really soft rock. It's, if you look up Mohs hardness scale, M-O-H-S, you'll see that this is a 3.5 to a 4. It's relatively soft rock, and of course it's sedimentary, so it's got a lot of bedding planes in there, and it fractures really easy. Uh, the harder stuff is going to take a little bit more work, but we'll get into that later. I just wanted you to get a close-up view of this rock, how it fractures it beautifully. So we're going to get onto this one, and then I'm going to go through the whole thing with you, and we're going to have some fun. So you know what I'm going to say, huh? So come on, let's go! All right, so the first thing you need to do is determine the type of rock that you're drilling in. The harder, the better. Now you got a lot of igneous rocks that are really, really hard and they fracture great and they have a lot of compression. This is limestone. Remember it's 3.5 to 4 on most scale of hardness. So I know it's gonna fracture real easy. So I don't need a lot of blasting on this guy. First thing you need to do, drill your holes. You're gonna start with the smallest bit you got and then work up to the biggest bit. Now before you get all excited, and start drilling holes. Remember, you don't want to go all the way through the rock. You want to be at least halfway through, if not three quarters. So if you see, here's the back of my rock. Here's the other side. My rock is about that thick, maybe 18 inches thick. Now, I highly recommend you get yourself a measuring stick and then you put it in the hole to find out how deep you are. Now right now, I'm about this deep which is three quarter easy. So I'm not gonna go any deeper. I got one right next to it that's three quarter too. So I'm gonna blast these in succession and, and fracture off a big chunk of limestone and then work down. So anyway, whew, I know it's windy day. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And since I'm starting to work under an overhang, I gotta put my hard hat on in case I get some loose rock coming off the back. So anyway, I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So stay tuned. <laughs> okay, now another thing I wanted to cover real quick. Here's your starter bit. See how tiny that guy is? And then there's your intermediate. And then there's a decent length right there. Now, if you can afford it, get as many of these guys as you can. They're not that expensive. You can get them at Lowe's or Harbor Freight or, or Home Depot. But the point being is, is that if you're gonna drill a whole bunch of holes, cause you're gonna fire like four or five heads, you can fire up to 10. 
you're gonna want to rotate your bits keep them cool because they'll wear out super fast if you just keep grinding them in there and then you'll be going back and buying more now another thing i have to point out is that if your rock has a flat bedding plane like this limestone does or a linear surface you want to drill the same angle now i've seen some guys go straight down in there and you can do that but i found out that i can fracture that rock better if i drill at the same angle as the bedding plane or the linear surface or if i'm working with metamorphic rock and i've got foliated rock there i'm going to drill at the same angle and the blasting will be a lot cleaner so anyway I'm, i've got this hole ready and also one more thing i know it's a lot of stuff to cover this guy right here i've seen a lot of guys just shove it all the way down in the hole and crank on it and you'll break this pump you don't want to do that first thing you want to do when you buy this pump is you're going to want to notch the end of the tip right there you see that notch it the reason why is that when it's all the way into the back of the hole there's no notch there and you crank down on that thing you could actually pop that seal if you have a notch in there it has somewhere for that air to blow out to the side so you put it in there gently back it off a little and pump slowly don't get in there and crank on it because if there's too much pressure you can actually pop the top here or rupture the seal so remember to do that nice and gentle remember to notch that too i know it's a lot to cover but i want you to know everything i know so you can be an effective miner too and then you could have almost almost as much gold as being slim so you know what i'm gonna say huh so come on let's go all right so i got my heads in there one head two head three head <laughs> all right so you should always try to put weight on top of these now i'm gonna lean some rocks on them on this guy and this way this guy so it'll compress it into the hole because when it goes off the more compression it has to force in it forces more of that blast down through the rock if not you'll just see him pop up a little bit and that ain't no good so let me get some rocks on here Okay, let's see what happens now. Fire in the hole! Yeah, look at that way out just nice! <laughs> let's take a look at that. Now see that? I know you're thinking it didn't go off. There's my borehole right there. But if you look in the back of it, see where it ruptured? Yeah, that one went off good. See that? There's my borehole right there, all the way down. And almost popped out the bottom see that you got to be careful and of course you can see where this one fired too see where it's empty and it fractured this rock beautifully all right now another thing i wanted to mention real quick is is if your rock is deeper than these blast rods and it's going to happen this length here you can put boosters in the hole to help compensate for the depth and what we did here is if you notice that my hole goes almost all the way to the bottom of the rock I actually put two boosters in there. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, if your rock is really big, you could actually put water in the hole, and that will actually amplify the blast force, the compression wave. So I'm going to show you how to do that too, but I just wanted you to see that because I know you're thinking, hey, Jeff, your hole is deeper than the length of that rod. How did you do that? That's because I had two boosters in there. But I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute, okay? So you know what I'm going to say, huh? Oh, he's in there good. So come on, let's go. All right, so I'm going to show you how to prime these guys because there's a specific way I've found that it's much easier. All right, so the first thing you do is you take your firing line and there's your two leads right there and you put them through. Be careful not to break them. See how I got it sticking out the other side right there? I don't know if you can see that. And then I'll take the other one and gently put it in the hole and make sure it's sticking out the other side. See that? I can see it right there. I don't know if you can see that. All right, so then take your firing head, put it into the top, right through here, see that? Slide it all the way in. Last but least, put your charge on the end. And then make sure your little slot is clean because every time you go to do a fire, you're gonna fire a charge, it's gonna actually get built up with rubber and pieces of that line. And then you're just going to go ahead and push them into that slot, like such. 
all the way down. And make sure he's in there all the way, because if not, it'll jam up in that in your borehole. Then you're gonna take him, slide him into the borehole just like that. Straight on in. All the way to the bottom. It's very, very important that this guy goes to the bottom of the hole. If you've got any air down here at the bottom, the charge is gonna rush out the bottom and it's not gonna do anything. So you gotta make sure it's all the way down in there. Now, don't put your hands on top like this. Hold it from the side and push down. In case it goes off, you don't want it to pop up. And then of course you're gonna put a big rock on top. But that's very important that there's no air down at the bottom of this drill hole because all the explosive force, the pressure wave will go out through there and you won't get nothing. So we're gonna shoot this rock and get out of the way because it's too big, I can't lift it. Slim, where are you? I'm not even gonna say it because you're probably tired of hearing me saying it. Fire and hope. That was a good one. Fire and hope. Woo wee. Man, that really busted up that rock good, didn't it? Look at that. Man, I'll tell you what, that's open nice and good. Nice and good.